Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today I'm going to draw a bottle cap. So why would I draw a bottle cap? Well, the idea actually came from a comment on a video that we had up on YouTube a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was a, longer than that now, uh, but we drew a paper lantern. Somebody said the profile that we used for a follow me looked like it could be just push pulled and it would create a bottle cap. Um, not really push pull. The profile would make kind of more of a gear shape, but I thought about that. Like, that's kind of cool. Like, how would I go about modeling something like this? And I did, and I found out, uh, you know, this was the perfect thing to model because you guys know when I make these videos, I like it when we show more than just how to model a thing. What I want to show you is different workflows, different ways to use tools, that sort of thing. And this did that. So I was, it was excited that I just had to share it with you. So we're going to model a bottle cap in SketchUp right now. All right, so I'm going to start by putting in a circle. So I learned that a normal bottle cap has 21 ridges around the outside. So to make a, a bottle cap, to model it that way, I want to do a circle with twice as many. So I'm going to do a 42-sided circle. So you just type 42 into the sides down there. And then pull it out and pull it out on the red axis very intentionally. I want to make sure I have it aligned with the red there. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to offset it. And I'm just going to offset it. It doesn't really matter. Just, just a significant amount just to get a, a lip out there. Now. I want to find that red axis again, so I'm going to go out to the to the center point. And I'm going to pull out on red, and that red should come out and hit the edges. See how it's hitting there and there at the edges? I'm going to draw another line, one end up from there, and another line one more time. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to model the ridge right here and then just copy it around the circle. So right now, I can actually get rid of all this geometry around the outside. Actually, there's, there's really no reason to get rid of it right this second, so... Um, maybe I'll just hold on just a sec. All right, now I'm going to draw a couple of circles. I don't want these circles to be 42 sides because that's going to give me a lot of teeny tiny geometry. In fact, I want to limit the amount of geometry in a circle, so I'm going to drop it down to 12 and hit enter. All right, now I'm going to go from the middle of this point, pull it out to here. Middle of this point, pull it out to here. And now I'm going to erase the outside of this circle and the inside of this circle. All right, so what I just did there, get rid of this now, is I just created that little ridge and the piece for it to pull up right there. See that? Now, watch what happens. I'm going to make a copy of this and set it over here. Just, just don't mind me. That's, that's over there. I'm going to take this geometry as it is. I'm going to find the center. I'm going to use rotate with the copy command, copy modifier to go here and tell it to do that 20x. And I get that. Looks like a blue ribbon. Actually, it looks like a bottle cap from above. Now, if I take this and I raise it straight up, it's going to auto fold. So it's going to try to make that work. But you can see weird stuff happen, right? So as I look around here, I'll turn on hidden real quick just to see what exactly is going on. So some of these look close. That almost is what I want right there. If I come around this side, it looks like this piece maybe got it right. Um, but you can see auto fold was kind of guessing which vertices were supposed to align as it pulled the geometry up and it did not necessarily guess well. Autofold is a great tool if you're doing very basic movements and the geometry can be assumed um, properly. In this case, where I have kind of a little bit more guesswork to, to make this perfect, uh, it doesn't work out right. So what I'm going to do is delete that, and I'm going to come over here and kind of force it. I'm going to tell it how I want to divide this up as I pull this up. So I'm going to come in here. And first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to draw a center from the center of this arc to the center of this edge down here. Same thing over here, center of the arc, center of the edge. So that's going to help. That's going to get me on the right track. I, I want to draw lines from these, these two points here and these two points here, though. Um, and I want to bring them down. And I don't want to just arbitrarily, I don't want to go parallel to this or just kind of arbitrarily pick a point. It probably wouldn't be a big deal. It'll be such small small geometry, but we're here to learn. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this edge right here and divide it into two pieces and then draw lines from the arc down to those two new endpoints. So I'm going to grab this edge, right click, and I'm going to say divide. And so something weird's happening right here. You guys seeing this? Uh, see how those red dots aren't on the line? 
So the issue is this isn't actually a single edge. It's actually a piece of a curve. So this is actually a small single segment curve right here. So if I divide it, weird stuff's going to happen. It's going to break and see that it tried to like make an arc here. It, it, I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but I know it's not what I want. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to erase that piece right now. And I'm going to come in and fill it in like this with just a regular edge. This edge I can divide and see, oh, see red dots are on the line where they're supposed to be. Let's divide it to two. And now I'm just going to go drag this up to here, drag this down to here. Perfect. That's what I want. Now I could do that one, two, three more times, or let's save some time, grab these three pieces and we're going to use the rotate command to flip it along the middle and place it over here. I'm going to do this by clicking right here at this point and dragging my mouse up to the end. This isn't on axis. This edge over here is on axis. This edge isn't. So I'm, by dragging along that line, I set that line as the center of my rotation. And now I can pick this point and modifier key to copy, flip it up over to here. See that? Ooh, yeah, that's what I want. All right, I can do that again. I can click and drag right across this line. And I can say, grab this one and get modifier, flip that over to here. And then we can actually get rid of these extra lines and then grab these three and rotate one last time up here. Each of these lines will be slightly different because they're all coming out of the radius. I can say modifier copy here. Beautiful. Now I do want to get everything the same so I can just right click and say orient faces. It'll flip them all up. Now that is what I want. So I'm going to grab just that geometry. I'm going to use rotate to go find the center again from the center. Option copy from here to here, 20X. There we go. All right, and one thing I could do too is I could, ah, we'll soften it afterwards. The point is now if I grab this and I hit the up arrow, look as I drag it straight up, that's what I'm looking for. That is exactly the geometry I want. I can, I can fine tune this a little bit too because I can grab this, I can scale it about the middle to bring it out so it's up over, a little more vertical down there. That's awesome. That's looking like a bottle cap. I might finish this off by doing something like maybe I'll offset a couple times, something like that. And then I can bring this straight up and grab this one, bring it straight up to a lesser amount to kind of get that curve in there. If I wanted to, I could actually do a follow me with an arc around there, but it's such a small detail. I probably wouldn't go to that extreme. Let's go ahead and select all of it. I'm going to turn my, my, hidden geometry off. We'll soften smooth. Do that. Drain it up a little bit so we can get rid of those lines on the edge. Oh yeah. There we go. And with that, we have some good looking bottle cap geometry. So again, you're probably not going to, on a normal day, not you know, on average Wednesday, you're not going to go, man, I got to draw another bottle cap. Odds are good if you needed a bottle cap for something, you could go download it. But I suggest giving it a try because there's some interesting, like I said, we hit the thing with dividing an arc, um, we, the auto fold issue, uh, the way that the, the geometry deforms. It was a really cool uh, exercise there and uh, it's worth trying. So give it a shot. See if you can make a bottle cap. Let me know how it goes. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Like I said, this video came from a comment on another video, so I'd love to hear what you think about this. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you. All right, you know what? Don't go yet. I was just thinking this bottle cap looks good, but it's not a solid. Can I just in a minute or so make it a solid? Let's see how that works. All right, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and as you can see, this is not a solid. It's just a surface. I'm going to triple click and make it a group. And then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to edit paste in place. And then I'm going to scale that copy down about the middle from a corner. 
I'm just going to take it down just that much. Not an exact number, it's an ish kind of measurement. All right, so that scaled it into the middle a little bit smaller. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to grab by any, any point on the bottom, doesn't matter which, and move it vertically. So I'm hitting my up arrow to constrain to vertical movement. I'm going to drag it down until it hits this piece right here. All right, so see I have two overlapping bottle caps, one inside the other, and I'm gonna take this one, actually I'm gonna take both of them, explode them, grab the bottom one, reverse faces, and then if I just connect a couple edges together here, it should close up, there we go. And now this is a 3D, 3D solid as opposed to just a surface. I used some fine tuning there too. I could actually grab grab this outside edge and bring it in or grab this, you know, scale that out a little bit. But uh, there we go. Real quick, after credit scene there, a little bonus, uh, there's a 3D solid bottle cap as opposed to what we had before. Thank you.